Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's always great to see you guys tuning in and seeing what we're getting up to. And what we're getting up to this week, well, it's a photo shoot under the Milky Way. Beautiful night sky predicted tonight. So I'm going to take you out there. But before we even get to that, I want to go back to the very beginning. So I'm just getting my gear together here at home. Still, um, it's about five o'clock in the afternoon uh, and it won't be dark for hours yet. And at this time of year, the Milky Way core is going to be rising up in that sky in the east, probably at about 3 a.m. So we're not really going to get out there till quite late tonight. So before that, I want to take you through all of the steps and all of the things that I do to get myself ready for a typical night shoot. Concentrating mainly on the planning for our subject, working out the direction, how I know where the Milky Way core is going to be, all of those sorts of things. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do before we do anything else is work out where the Milky Way core is going to be in the sky at the time that we want to be out there shooting. So my go-to program whilst I'm at home here at my desktop is Stellarium. So I'm going to show you how this works and run you through just the planning process at this point and we'll go from there. Now, as you can see, when you first open the program Stellarium, it comes up at the time that it is right now. So it's five past five in the afternoon. Now, how do I know that? Well, over on the side here, there's the second window down says date and time. If I click on that, you'll see the date and time window come up. There it is there, five past five in the afternoon, facing due south. Now, as I go through the hours, I'll just click on these here and I'll go through per hour. You can see there now I'm at uh, about nine o'clock in the evening. You can see there's still twilight in the sky, but I want to keep going. 10 o'clock. Now at 10 o'clock it's getting quite dark and you can see the Southern Cross here. Now I've been shooting a fair bit of that recently as you would have seen in my previous videos. It looks fantastic there doesn't it? Now this is facing due south and you can see as we progress through the hours and I'll go to midnight how the this is the tail of the Milky Way and it's actually rising up as we go through the hours. How do I know that? Well if I go down here I can actually click on these horizontal and vertical bars which give us latitude and longitude. So that's handy. We're going to come back to that later. As it stands at the moment, this is midnight. So I'm going to go through a little bit further. One, two, three. So that's 3 a.m. So tomorrow morning. Now I'm just going to grab that and bring it around a bit. And you can see here that the Milky Way here, core, is beginning to rise in the southeast sky. So you can see the southeast marker there. As I zoom in, you can see here, this is the constellation Scorpius, uh, Milky Way core right here. And as I progress, I'll go another hour through, that's 4 a.m. You can see it's rising up a little bit higher in the sky. So here's our horizon. Here is the direction that we need to face. This is at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning to capture the Milky Way core rising. So all I need to do is take note of the exact marking on my compass here. You can see there we are, 100 degrees, 110, 120, 130, 140, etc. So roughly speaking, now this is rough, and I say it's rough because the Milky Way core is huge. You know, you, you, you don't have to be exact with these measurements because you will not miss it. So if I face in the direction of about 110, 120 degrees southeast, I will catch the Milky Way. And as it says here at four o'clock, by the way, this program is, has been set to my place in the world, my latitude and longitude in the world, so it knows where I am in the world. So this is the Southern Hemisphere, and this is what it looks like in Australia where I live. So all I need to do is take note of this time, about four, between three and four, maybe even to five o'clock. If I go to five, you can see it's still in that rough area. So I've got about a two hour window of opportunity in that same direction between southeast and east. And if I go any further, so I'll go to six o'clock, you can see that uh, the dawn is approaching there. So let me just take that back a little bit and show you. You can see the this program is fantastic because it actually shows you, it's like a planetarium. It shows you exactly what's happening with the sky and it shows you exactly how much light there will be at certain times of the, of the morning. So at, by according to this, I can go to about five o'clock before there'll be too much uh, 
of the dawn light. So that gives me about a two hour window of opportunity. So my next step is to get out and work out exactly what location I want to shoot at. Okay, so we're on the road looking for a location for our photo shoot tonight. So uh, I'm heading out of town. I've got a couple of places in mind, but there's always conditions that you face uh, at night time that you're not anticipating. So I always like to scare that during the daytime. Even though I've been out there before, I want to have a good look around. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, he hasn't said anything about the weather. How do I know what the weather's going to be doing tonight? Um, well, that's a very good question and I have thought about it. I just haven't mentioned it to you guys yet, so I'll do that now. So my go-to weather app is Clear Outside. Now, I showed you this a few videos ago, but Clear Outside is basically uh, a cloud predictor, but it does a whole lot more than that. It gives you some uh, weather conditions, for example, temperature, wind speed, and think vital things like dew point. So in the, in the cooler months, you can tell whether the lens might fog up if that dew point gets too close to the ambient temperature, things like that, which are really, really handy. So clear outside, I've looked that up and it's telling me that tonight the uh, clouds, it's pretty cloudy at the moment, there's probably about a 50 or 60% cloud cover, but it's telling me that the cloud is going to be gone by about midnight, one o'clock, something like that. So that's what I'm hoping and uh, we'll just see if it turns out that way. All right, so I've just driven up this dirt road. I'm absolutely in the middle of nowhere. There's no one to be seen for miles and miles around here. So it's quite an open area. And I've spotted this tree here on the side of the road. Now I've been at this way a little bit before. So I'll just show you uh, the tree. Let's come over and have a look at it. Now, my plan is to line this tree up with the Milky Way over there behind it. So what I've just done just now as flies are buzzing around me. I'm getting sick of these flies this summer. Now what I've done is I've just lined up using PhotoPills app, this tree facing down towards the eastern sky. And it works out beautifully. The Milky Way will come up. In fact, I can get it coming up on either side of the tree, depending on where I position my camera. My plan is just to put it up right here on this fence, facing down that way. And I don't have any trouble uh, with that. I'll use probably use my 20 millimeter focal length lens just to give me a little bit more width to play with. Now we can see down there um, in the valley behind the tree, that's facing east. But remember when we're looking at Stellarium. Now Stellarium told me that all I had to do was look to 110 to 120 degree in the east, and that's where the Milky Way core would come up. Now, whatever your part of the world is, you'll have a different um, coordinates, that's okay. Just put it into Stellarium and it will tell you exactly where to look. But it's looking good. I'm gonna come back here tonight and we'll continue our story. So once I establish the place I wanna come back to shoot, I make sure I enter that into my GPS. And uh, then it's a simple matter of just pressing the button tonight and it'll bring me straight back there. In three and a half kilometers, turn right on Calder Highway. <sighs> Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, well, it's 2.47 a.m. It says it's 17 degrees, so that's pretty warm, 17 degrees Celsius. Anyway, I'm going to jump in the car and head off to this location and see what we can capture. All right, well, we're on the road. It's probably about a 20 minute drive to get to where we're going here. So uh, just gotta watch out for kangaroos. This time of night, there's usually a few around. It's really clear. So the weather forecast was spot on and it's not windy. 
pretty good conditions for shooting nightscapes. So, uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, well we've arrived out here on location, just about going to set up now. Now my intention tonight is to do a very simple composition. So I'm just going to use my Nikon Z6 here, the 20mm f1.8, and I'm just going to line up the tree with the Milky Way in the background. Now I've noticed since I got here that there's a reasonable amount of light pollution down there. Now I expected that because I'm facing straight into the town of uh, about 80, 90,000 people, which is not that far away. But that's not too bad because I'm at a fairly elevated position here. And um, so I've got a good silhouette of the tree. So I've got my tripod really low. You can see this is as high as I'm gonna get the tripod, quite low to the ground. Um, and I like to do that because I wanna make sure that the tree, which is the feature of this image, is silhouetted. If I had the tripod too high, the tree would intersect with the ground and it wouldn't have that beautiful silhouette that I'm chasing. So I'm just going to go and set up and we'll get going. So here we are, I've got my camera set up nice and low as you can see here. Also, you'll notice I've got my trusty stool just to save my weary body, uh, as I mentioned a few videos ago. So my intention tonight is to do a pretty simple composition, but I'm still going to stack for noise reduction. I've been doing this pretty much with every shoot uh, for the past 12 months or so. And the reason I'm doing that is because it just gets so much more detail uh, with less high ISO noise. I'm gonna be shooting this at ISO 6400, at f 2.8 and 10 second shutter speeds. So and I'm doing 10 in a row and stacking those for noise reduction in Sequator software. Um, firstly, do my edits in Lightroom, then Sequator for the background. Uh, then I'll be shooting three or four foreground images. I'll drop my ISO down to about 500, maybe 800. We'll just see how that goes. Um, and my aperture I'll drop to f5. The reason I do that is to get a sharper foreground image. Now there's not a whole lot of lighting that needs to be done on this tree. I want to keep it subtle. So the whole point of this is a simple composition. I don't want to go overboard. But nevertheless, so the tree over there, I'm just going to compose it now, line it up so I've got a lot of the Milky Way there coming down. I'm going to um, shoot a couple of compositions, one with the Milky Way on the right hand side of the tree. I'm going to shoot another one, reposition, and have the Milky Way on the left hand side of the tree. And uh, yeah, we'll just work out which one we like the best. Now you can see very clearly here the Photo Pills app where it shows the Milky Way coming down the left hand side of the tree. You can see the tree there in the background and the time now is 4.39 a.m. And that's exactly what it said earlier when I was here during the daytime. Uh, so this app is very accurate. Um, facing in the southeast sky, perfect. And here we go. So this is the 10 images that I just shot with the Milky Way on the right hand side of the tree. And as you can see, this is uh, very beautifully silhouetted which is what I was looking for. A little bit of light pollution in the background actually helps me with that. Gives me that gorgeous silhouette. The Milky Way there looks fantastic. Uh, now you can see my settings I've shot here at ISO 6400, f2.8, 10 second shutter speed, weight balance 4000 Kelvin, and that was consistent through all of those images. Uh, and then I shot, you can see there are a couple of foreground images, pretty much just both sides of the tree not much else. And uh, they were shot at F5, ISO 800 in this case, 10 second shutter speed at ISO uh, at 4000 Kelvin white balance. Then I went over to the other side of the tree. You just saw the glimpse of it. And you can see the Milky Way on this left-hand side of the tree. So I just wanted to try a little bit different composition. Now, I've 
On both of these images, you'll notice I've offset the Milky Way either to the left or the right of the frame. So in essence, I'm following the rule of thirds there. In this particular frame, I've got this little bit of the fence over here on the left-hand side, which I, I quite like. Now the settings for this are exactly the same as the other one, ISO 6400, f2.8 aperture, 10 second shutter speed at 4000 Kelvin uh, white balance, and so there's 10 of those once more. I'm going to stack those, then, oh I took a single shot of this one, just to compare. So this is just a light painted single shot at high ISO, actually doesn't look too bad on the back of the screen, but I, it's good to compare just a single shot with the stacked ones. After that, I just took, as you can see here, an uh, image of the foreground. So I've stopped down to f5, ISO 500 in this case, t still 10 second shutter speed, and the 4000 Kelvin. I've left everything the same, just changed the ISO and the aperture. You can see again, nice bit of light painting on the tree there. Um, so if I zoom in on that, you can sort of, let me just do that. You can see how the tree looks. Now it's fairly bright but not overexposed and that's what I'm careful not to do when I'm light painting these foregrounds. Really important. So all in all, I think we've had a pretty good night out here under the stars. It's getting very late, I need to get home, but that's pretty much it from start to finish. The planning process, showing you how I go about finding my locations and getting out here and shooting the scene. So I hope you like the images and I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time under the stars. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, fantastic, love to have you on board. I uh, love to read your comments down below, so until next time, I'll see you later.